right now we are going to be talking about visual or vision rehabilitation as we have already seen in that feature and we have a guest here with us too it educates us and tell us about everything we need to know or answer all your questions that you may have on vision rehabilitation. Let me let me do the honors. Yes, of course. And with us on the show today, we have Dr. Yemisi Shoyumbo, and she is a clinical optometrist. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. You're for welcome. Having me. Yeah. Thank you. Um, visual rehabilitation are, um, comprises of different um, methods and different specialties to help people who have lost their vision um, regain some kind of functional um, size or, will I say, get back on track, um, maintain the, the little vision they have left and uh, maximize it in quotes, you know, and still have a functional life, wow. nevertheless. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so now we know about regular eye care yeah. going to the optometrist and we also hear about vision rehabilitation. Can yeah. you outline the difference for us? Um, yet the optometrist is your primary care provider. Um, if need be, you're referred to an ophthalmologist. Um, however, for visual rehabilitation, the eye doctors or the eye care professionals are not the only ones that provide the services. And this is because it's a range of services. There's a part that the um, visual, visual um, medical visual specialists would have to come in there's also a path for counseling. Yeah, there's also a path for learning how to be independent again after significant visual loss. Different specialties, different professionals play um, in getting someone to um, maximize whatever vision is left after a visual loss or whatever must have cost it. Okay, mm. so okay. Um, basically vision rehabilitation is a package. Yeah, it's, it's a package. not just That's right. The word. Okay, yeah, so like we go to the regular um, optometrist for like to check yeah. our eyes, eyes but and for rehabilitation, it's a whole, it's a whole package. package. So now you've defined um, what visual rehabilitation is mm. and let's go to what causes it actually. Why is it necessary? As Why is point? it necessary? Yes. Um, there are a couple of things that would happen. Um, there are a, a couple of diagnoses that mm. will lead to um, being a, having to advise the patient to say, you know what, you have to go for rehabilitation. Um, glaucoma, especially um, if it wasn't managed on time, and then it has led to a high degree of um, visual loss. Visual loss okay. um, diabetic retinopathy or diabetes in itself. Visual loss. Yes. Or will I say diabetic retinopathy, a group of things that happen in the eye due to unmanaged um, um, diabetes, it's part of the complications of diabetes. So okay. sometimes visual loss comprising of so many other things happening in can also, um, is one of the complications okay. of diabetes. Sometimes injury, you know, um, blunt injury to the eye or a head injury. Yes. Um, a complicated head injury can also lead to visual loss. Um, cataracts, um, although why cataracts um, has a cure in that it can be surgically taken out. However, sometimes um, when it wasn't managed properly, when the patient didn't go to seek help in time, it could also lead to visual loss. So it's when the visual loss occurs yes. to a certain degree and where... Um, glasses or optical aids cannot help that's where we begin to talk about visual rehabilitation at what point do you know that it has gotten to the point where you need visual rehabilitation from regular eye care at what point do i know that okay my my eye hurts i have a certain problem but this has passed you know getting my glasses yeah. and eye drops mm, and drops this it. is at the point where i need um visual rehabilitation yeah, that's a good question because a lot of people don't even know that no. it exists a lot of people don't even know where to go to in the first place. But it still goes back to being conscious of our health, being conscious of our sight. Um, we all advise annual eye checks um, based on certain criteria and ages. However, the first point of call is to go to your eye care practitioner, you know, the ophthalmologist, the optometrist. And if need be, they will always refer you to, to the process of going through a visual habilitation but it's good to know that it exists it's good to know that the fact that i've lost my sight or functional sight is not the end of the world 
it's good to know that there are a lot of even technology um, assistance to help regain, regain functional sight. life, mm -hmm. even with your sight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know that um, visual re the, the, um, the, we have the visual rehabilitation therapist. Yeah. That's a lot to take. Visual rehabilitation <laughs> therapist. And so what is their duty? What do they do? So the therapist, first of all, evaluates your life. Yes. The lifestyle. At that point in time, in fact, to regress a little bit, um, research says that after age 60, mm -hmm. one in four people would have a visual needs, you know, or some form of visual illness or the other. Mm -hmm. So the therapist looks at that, that person or that patient. Yes. Sometimes, I mean, it's not a rule of thumb. So some people might not even have gotten to age 60. Remember I talked about the things that would have cost yes. it in the first yeah. place. So it's not, um, not all of them are synonymous with what, a person, what the person's age was, you know. So he looks at your lifestyle um, does a couple of, they have a couple of tests that they also would do, and then they determine what kind of aids would help you at that point in time. Sometimes it might be optical aids, sometimes it might be non-optical aids. Um, non-optical aids like some kind of lighting source, okay. um, some kind of TV source, you know, okay. that gets things more enlarged. Um, sometimes they have to cancel, like I said, sometimes they have to teach you um, other skills, okay. you know, when you lost the loss of sight could be psychologically um, demeaning as yes. well. It affects people psychologically. So sometimes we are looking at letting the person get all the skills for everyday life, how to walk to the door, how to mm. pick up a cup again, how can I read, you know, um, do I need more lighting cells? Do I need another kind of aids to put on to help me see? Um, can I cope with some kind of aids as compared to the other. So, I mean, this specialist looks at this in a whole, you know. Okay. So, like I said, it's not just all about, let's do an eye test. Yeah. Like, can you see, can you not see at this point in time? There are a lot, whole lot of other things that involved. are coming to play okay. when you talk about the, the visual yeah. rehabilitation. rehabilitation. Yeah. Okay, so at the point where you realize and decide that you need visual rehabilitation, how long does it take to not need it anymore to get to a point where you're, you know, back to your okay. functioning um, state? Um, unfortunately, most often than not, it's long term. It's, it's long term because um, vision, apart, vision that is lost, 90% of the time cannot be gained back. So the role of the um, vision specialist or the role of the rehabilitation specialist at that point in time is let's go steps from here. This has happened. How can we maximize your sight? How can we get you back to live maximum comfortable life? What are the assistance you will need? So unfortunately, most often than not, we cannot, I won't, I can't authoritatively say that we'll, you get your vision back yes, after a while. Me. It's more like an aid that you might need to use long term. It doesn't get really, really bad. Yes, yeah, okay. so that it doesn't get worse. And not just even getting worse, okay. so that you can live comfortably again. You can get maximum productivity, even though some amount of vision is lost. I mean, there are also some aids for even driving, for people who have lost their vision and yes. still have to drive. Right. If you qualify for some certain aids after you have been examined, you can still have some aids that would help you drive. There's some aids after the low vision specialist has examined you to help you read as well so that you're not dependent on someone to read. You're not dependent on someone yes, to, to drive. drive. I mean, it's a things. whole lot. It's a whole lot. And we cannot throw away the psychological effect of someone Sorry. losing their vision. Mm -hmm. Some people get depressed. I mean, you know, imagine having to be dependent all of, all of a sudden just because um, your sight has deteriorated and there's seemingly nothing the primary care or surgery can do afterwards, you know. So sometimes, even after the surgery has been done, you still have to go, you to, still have to, go and see how... Um, you can maximize whatever um, percentage of vision is left. Okay, so let's talk about the rehabilitation process. You know, what are the methods? How do um, the therapist, how does he go about it? 
Uh, so they have um, the therapists have criteria for um, what's it called now? I, I, I want to use the word testing, and I don't want to use the okay. word testing. But on, on a general base, there are different equipments. There are different. Will I call them assisted um, assisted objects? Okay. Some are optical, like I said earlier, optical meaning special kind of glasses. Okay. So not the regular glasses that you have seen with the patients uh, that we all see every yes. day. These ones are specially made. Some are special lighting source, you know, because at that point, some patients would need light, a lot of light. So on the, on the general, so I don't bore you, the visual requirements of a patient determines what um, device, whether optical, non-optical, or a combination okay. would be given to that patient. Oh, sorry, I was, I was waiting to hear where Brails will come in. Yeah. Is, is it part of the rehabilitation yeah, process? It's, it's, part, it's also part, and it's very helpful, especially, especially for people who have lost sight almost completely. completely. Okay. You know, so they have to learn how, the Brails all over again and have to use it to read. And surprisingly or positively, they get, they get back on track. They get to read. They get to um, study again. Some, some have even gone to get um, further education, to PhD levels. So, I mean, that's also wow. um, yeah. a very, very, very useful um, technique. Okay. Um, some people also have to learn new skills mm -hmm. as regards new work, yes. as regards new hobbies, mm -hmm. as compared to what they were used to or what Before, they used to love. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the affordability. How affordable mm. is visual yeah. rehabilitation? And if it is um, very expensive, yes. how do you know? How does one go about getting this um, this care, even regardless of the fact that it's expensive? That's so. In in a lot of other claims, some of these things can be subsidized. Oh. Of a truth, the prime in the if you try to get a lot of these aids in the private sector is expensive. Yes, it's true. Very. It can be very, very pricey. However, I'm aware that there are a lot of also government setups that you can go to and get it a bit more affordable than um, working into a private Probably. setting. However, the timing, the numbers, the crowd, the weight is also a factor to consider. Mm -hmm. However, it's, 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 you can, the government hospitals, a couple of teaching hospitals, um, the couple of, I know there's a very functional low vision center in Lagos here okay. as well. And um, if need be, we all refer our patients to the low vision center and they, they, they usually get help. It's good to know that the government like, is making provisions. Yes, like, yes, yes, yes. Because yes. some people would hear about vision yes. rehabilitation and feel like, oh, that would definitely be pricey. So yes, I can't yes, afford yes. that. Let me a just lot of wait. times mm. they're pricey. It's actually good to hear. And that. I would like to talk about technology as well. Okay, yes. So mm. there are a lot of technology innovations. I was even um, sent like a, a read up on one, a new one recently that actually does help patients who are diagnosed as completely blind okay. and it's technology they can put it on like a VR machine yes. and they can still get to see. So there are a lot of wow. other technology. Well, people are yes. completely blind. People who are completely wow. blind. I'll, I'll, I'd love to mention the name of the product by me. You have the, to yeah, <laughs> yeah for, <laughs> for where we are at this point. But um, there are a couple of technology innovations mm. coming up every day that are available yes. um, that you can buy in the market. And if you can go to your low vision specialist or be referred to your low vision specialist, they would definitely advise you. However, it might be pricey. I was being there. Yeah, <laughs> yes. most of the time yeah. it's pricey. Yes. But it's available. We need to know that these things are available. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm and happy to be here. Us and educating us. Yeah. Thank you, thank thank you, you so, so much. Because yes. I actually learned a lot. To enjoy more interesting episodes of Tea or Coffee, then like and subscribe.